everybody. Welcome back to a professional video production on a shoestring budget. Today I'm going to show you the little Husband X4 uh, quadcopter with the uh, two megabyte camera. And um, I'm going to give you some tips on uh, out of the box, first time flying it for newbies like me. I'd never flown one of these things before. And, um, and then we're going to look at the, uh, the camera. I'm going to compare it to my uh, action cam. And we'll see how that'll compare. First of all, what a deal. I mean, this is great. I'm really having a lot of fun with this. $71 from a B&H photo, an extra battery, DSD card, uh, extra props. Get extra props because you're going to crash it. <laughs> you'll crash it um, and, um, and you'll beat them up. Uh, yeah, you know, under $100. So a, a great thing. I'm really having a lot of fun with it. Um, I would have liked to have gone to the more expensive <clears throat> platform, but... Uh, uh, when I saw hawks attacking drones, I got a little leery. Where I live on Vancouver Island, we have a lot of hawks and, and owls. So I thought I'd start with this and see if it gets attacked. Anyway, let's have a look at it. So um, right out of the box, 71 bucks, get an extra battery, charge it up because it won't be fully charged when you get it. Battery just slides in the back there. And um, they suggest when you connect the cables there to, to tuck them in the back. Uh, I haven't been doing that and it's been flying fine. It seems to me like these are awfully fine wire and, and if you start bending them around a lot, chances are, you know, you can end up breaking them and then you have to fix it, which is a hassle. Um, so, so let's get started. Okay, so you've, you've plugged it in and um, the lights are flashing. The lights are flashing on the drone here and, um, and you're, ready to, you're ready to go. You haven't turned the power on the controller yet. So making sure that the throttle control is down, um, turn it on. Turn on the power. And the lights on the drone will start, will stop flashing. So that lets you know that you've made contact with your controller. Yeah, so the first thing you do is you have to calibrate it. And, and I was in a big hurry, like most people are right out of the box. and. And I had it in the kitchen and I was flying it around and bashing into things and because it wasn't calibrated properly. And, and <clears throat> speaking of bashing into things, this little thing is really durable. I've, I've hit trees over 30 feet and, and had it crash to the ground and, and it's, it's a really durable little machine. Um, buy extra props because you, will, you can lose a prop when you crash it. I've lost one already. They, they tend to pop up when you crash it. Anyway, back to calibrating it. So um, mine's already calibrated, but I'll show you what you do. The first thing you can do is uh, throttle control, bottom, right, and you toggle this back and forth. And when the light on the drone flashes, it tells you that it's, it's gotten that first calibration. But you're probably not finished yet. Um, and and this, was, this was what it took me a couple of times to sort of figure out looking at YouTube videos. Um, so let's try our first flight and see what happens here. So power up, there it goes. Oh, it's, see how it's going backward on me a little bit? And I'm not touching the stick. Okay, so once you've calibrated the joystick to your drone, the next thing you're gonna need to do is trim it. And you need to do this while you're flying it. And, and this was, I didn't, I didn't do this for the first few flights and, and it really made it difficult to fly it. I really needed, once I got it trimmed and I could hover in one place, it really helped a lot. And it's really easy. These are the trim buttons right here, right here, side this control. So for um, your ailerons to trim it, you know, this way here, it's just self-explanatory. If it's drifting too far to the right, trim to the left. And the other control up here, another one for your elevator, if it's drifting forward or drifting backward, you control the elevator right there. You trim the elevator right there, backward, and just get it. And so trim it out until you can hover at one spot without, you know, without touching the uh, controller here. And that really helped me a lot. Okay, so let's try, uh, let's try flight and uh, let's try to fine tune the calibration. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that's actually pretty good. That's kind of what you want. That's sort of what you want. You want it just to hover in one spot you want to be able to just hover it in one spot when you're not using this control here. That's your, uh, your flight, one of your flight controllers. 
And that's, that's what I kind of struggled with in the beginning, was to get to this point here. And it was because I just wasn't paying attention. But once you get to this point, then you can really, you know, practice flying. Because if, if you kind of get into trouble, you can just let go of that, and it'll sort of hover in one spot. And that's what you're really looking for. So yeah, that's your, so that's your throttle. That'll, uh, that'll make it go up and down, that's your throttle. Side to side on that same controller, this is in beginner mode. Um, side to side on the same controller as your rudder, and that will turn the drone like that in a flat, in, in a flat turn. Um, the other controller here, uh, side to side is your aileron, and that'll, that'll get the drone to go on its side, and it'll move sideways once you do that. Plus, or you go the other way, it'll, it'll move, and it'll move it sideways. Backwards and, backwards and forwards on that same controller that controls the aileron, this one here, and that controls your elevator. And that'll, that'll get you to go forward or backward. Pretty simple. But the key is to get it calibrated so that, so that you can hover in one place. I really found that was the key as a beginner pilot. I've never flown a, an RC or, or one of these. And that was the key. Once I could hover in one place, then I could really sort of fool around with learning how to fly. Because if I got into trouble, I could let go of that controller and it would sort of stop, you know, depending on wind and, and things like that. But to me, that was the real key. So get it calibrated. That's the first thing you want to do. And, and just get so you can hover it. I suggest being outside where you have lots of room. The first time I fired it up in the house, I was crashing into stuff. And even outside, I've hit trees. But give yourself lots of room. And, and, and don't, you don't want your kids or your dogs around and stuff because, um, you know, you don't want to hit any, anybody. And, and that brings me to another point. It's very fast. It's really fast. And it takes off like a rocket. Um, and these controls are, are really sensitive. So that's a great thing. Like learn how to, how to hover it and then, you know, start slowly. And even then, I've had the thing in no time. It's up at 70 feet in the air. And, you know, and I'm going, well, and I'm trying to get it back down. So that's what I found to get started. Calibrate it properly, trim it, and learn how to hover it. So um, let's look at the camera. And I'm going to compare this camera to my Sony AS-15 Action Cam. Same light, sort of the same scene. Let's check that out. Okay, let's look at the, uh, the camera in the, in the little husband. It's a two megabyte camera, so, you know, it's not a great camera. Certainly doesn't perform that well inside. I mean, it works, but um, you want to try to use this outside. I'm a filmmaker, and I bought this for aerial photography, and knowing I wasn't getting a great camera. But, you know, you want to try to be outside. Sunny day is going to be better than a cloudy day. Keep the sun at your back if you can, or, you know, you're not going to want to shoot, shoot into the sun with this too much. But, but let's have a look at it, and I'm going to compare the camera in the husband to my, um, to my Sony uh, AS-15 action cam. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so the husband uh, times for a uh, drone here it takes a little SD card, plugs in the back, plug that in, and what you need to do is uh, push a little button there, and it flashes red, tells you it's on, and when when you're done, make sure you push that button again before you before you turn off the power because otherwise you'll lose your file. So let's have a quick let's have a quick look at this and, and see how the cameras compare. Another thing I'll tell you folks is that when you're learning how to fly this, keep the drone in the same direction you're pointing and that, uh, that makes it easier to keep your orientation with it until you get better at it. Um, and try to keep it close to you at first because like I said, this thing will get away from you. It'll get away from you real quick and then it gets kind of disconcerting. Okay, so I've turned the power off. That should have saved the file. Uh, another point, when the lights start to blink, normally when you're in flying mode, that means it's low on power. Get it on the ground right away and, and um, <clears throat> shut it off. You don't want to crash it any more than you have to. So there you go, folks. Uh, the Husband um, Quad Drone, $71 at B&H, plus accessories, under 100 Just loads of fun. And the camera's not bad. Um, 
you know, you can get some dramatic shots with it and, and it's not too bad, the wide angle uh, two megabyte camera in there. Um, so yeah, it's a great way to get started for the price. So check it out. Check out my series, uh, Professional Video Production on a Shoestring Budget. I review other cameras, my Sony V1U, my 1000U, pros and cons, lots of audio tips. I show you how to use mics, differences between shotguns and wireless labs. Um, so check out my, uh, my series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.